Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I am bringing you a full review of my very first ever river cruise. It was with Viking. It was incredible. I loved almost everything about it. There were a few things I didn't love. There were also a few things that I will do differently when and if I cruise with Viking again, and I can't wait to share it all with you. And I'm so glad that you're here. So the cruise that I was on was the Paris to Normandy river cruise with Viking. Full disclosure, I was hosted for this cruise, which this was my first ever time that a cruise line reached out and invited me to cruise with them. So that part was pretty exciting. I'm a little nervous doing this review because I do appreciate the fact that they hosted me, amazing opportunity, but also my primary loyalty is always going to be to you guys. So just know that they did host me, but I am still going to bring you my honest, true opinions about Viking, about river cruising, and I think probably most importantly is kind of who I think river cruising is best for. Now I'm going to be inserting while I'm talking different clips. So this is kind of gonna be a hybrid of a travel vlog and a review. Um, I'm not sure as I'm saying this, how all that's gonna work out, but hopefully you will walk away after watching this video, knowing if a Viking river cruise is right for you, feeling prepared to be successful on your Viking river cruise, and maybe knowing a few tips or tricks that you wouldn't have known otherwise. So. That's my goal for this video. We're gonna start with before you ever leave home, when you first book your cruise with Viking. The thing I love about Viking is they will do everything for you. They, as you know, most cruise lines will, but they will book your airfare, they will book your transfers, they will book your sailing. And especially if you're someone who is a little anxious about traveling in Europe, it could not be easier. They will make sure that everything is taken care of, and then you will have the opportunity to book your excursions. Now, the excursions are very well detailed on their website. You are gonna wanna really read what it says. Is it strenuous? Is there moderate walking? Are there hills? They try to do a very good job of making sure that you're not booking ex an excursion that you're not gonna feel comfortable doing. Um, but we booked our excursions pretty early on because there were a few, uh, Versailles and also the Normandy uh, beaches and the museum that we knew would get booked up very early. So we booked those early on, uh, but don't be too stressed about that. There is an included excursion every day. They give you all of the details of the included excursions, as well as the ones you can pay extra money for. You can always call them if you have questions. I'm gonna have a little bit more to say about excursions when I get to my what I would have done differently part. So stick around for that. But I did feel like the pre-cruise planning was very easy to figure out, very easy booking my flights and all those kinds of things. Now, when we got to Paris, um, it was super easy to find our guide. Uh, we were getting on the ship the same day that we flew. Viking typically, and they did this when I did the Viking Sea uh, cruise that I did a few years back with my mom, they typically dock in their first port for one night, which is great for travel because if for some reason a flight got canceled or whatever, we knew the ship was still gonna be in Paris, so they still would have been able to pick us up at the airport and get us to the ship. But the Viking representative was very easy to spot uh, once we got through baggage claim, we got all of our stuff. There was a big group of us that were all on the same flight from Atlanta and we were on the bus and off to the ship. Now I will say this, uh, and throughout this, you'll hear me kind of compare river cruising to ocean cruising, because I know a lot of you had questions about that. The getting on the boat part was like, if, if getting on a ship in Cape Canaveral, Florida is a 10 in stress, Getting on a river cruise in Paris, France is like a one in stress. Hi, Lenny. This is my dog, Lenny. He shows up in a lot of videos because whenever I start talking, he likes to come and say, hey. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Um, he's shedding so much right now. Hair flying everywhere. So yeah, we literally got off the bus and, and just walked on the ship. Like I, I don't have words for how relaxed it was. It was just like not even a thing. And that's gonna play out the more I talk about the differences. Very, very chill. Now, when we got in and they just kind of gave us a welcome, they gave us some towels, um, they gave us a little welcome drink, and then they showed us to our cabin. The cabins on river ships, river ships, river cruises are small very small. Like, I don't know if they're this small on all river cruising. I've kind of assumed that they are. Even though it was a tiny cabin, 
It did not feel tiny once we had been there for a couple of days. I was traveling with my son, William, he's 24. We've traveled together quite a bit. Um, and, and honestly, because it's so convenient, we were placed right next to this little library area. So one of us could pop out there and read a book or be on our phone while the other one was getting ready so we could give each other a little bit of space. It, it did not feel ridiculous after the first probably day, but when we first got in the cabin, I was like, wow, this is very, very tiny. But you're on the Seine, you're in Paris, who cares? You're hardly gonna be in the room at all anyway, except for to sleep and to get ready. We were out on our balcony more than I would have thought. Um, I absolutely loved sailing along the Seine. Once the boat would be like actually moving, and there were a couple of days where we made quite a bit of mileage uh, during the day, watching the water go by, watching the changing landscape, seeing the birds and the villages and the towns we would pass through, I was not prepared for how magical that would feel. So just otherworldly. The whole time as we're sailing by, and we're, we're sailing by like people's farms and, and apartments, and you know, like you can see people on the shore. As someone who loves water, loves being on the water, loves being in the water, I wasn't prepared for how much I would love this. I, I absolutely adored it. So we were out on the veranda a lot, um, but it is tiny. Now, having said that, it's small, but it was very well appointed. The bedding was very high end. The amenities in the bathroom were very high end. Um, everything was very, very clean. Um, the, the water pressure was good in the shower, like no issues on any of that. I, I kind of expected that. Again, having done um, Viking ocean cruises, I knew that they had a very high standard for excellence and the cabin quality was excellent. They do have uh, like the navigator's, uh, navigator's veranda or navigator's suite that you can book. And you can, you do get some extra perks for being in those rooms. We were obviously just in a regular room. Um, I'll put the room category that it was right here, but um, never had a problem with the room. The, they, they kept it perfectly clean all week. Uh, we did get, uh, housekeeping would come in, in the, after breakfast and then they would come in before bed, turn down our bed, give us our plans for the next day. Um, yeah, and I, I just thought the cabin was perfect for what it was, although they are small, so be prepared for that. If you are looking to pack a little bit lighter maybe for your river cruise because you don't wanna have a ton of stuff, go ahead and watch the unpacking video I did because you really don't need to pack that much and you'll be doing yourself a favor if you don't have a ton of clothes and a ton of luggage on your river cruise. So now let's talk about the food. There are only really two places to eat on the ship and this is very different if you're used to cruising on a big cruise ship. You have the main dining room and then there was a terrace the Aquavit Terrace, I believe it was called, that was the more casual dining, although it was the same menu. So they have a really big outdoor patio. Unfortunately, that was only open a couple of times during our trip because it was so pretty out there. But that's a little bit more laid back. I actually preferred eating out there to eating in the big dining room. The big dining room is huge. It's a little bit loud, um, but the experience in there was very, very good. And I thought that the food was excellent. Now, there were a couple of nights that were not as excellent as others. They did a big Normandy theme night uh, with this gorgeous buffet. We were able to all do some Calvados tasting. More on that in a minute because I found out I really like Calvados. What I really like though is apple cider, which apple cider is not the same thing in Normandy as it is in the U.S. It's actually more like a, uh, almost like a champagne, but oh my gosh, it's so very good. So, the food was very good. I am not a huge foodie, so it's not like I can tell you, oh, we had this one particular dish that was so amazing. But there were a couple of nights um, as a pescatarian, so I'm a vegetarian who also eats fish, where the fish was just out of this world outstanding. And I will tell you, I never walked out of the dining room hungry. The food was excellent. We had the Silver Spirits uh, wine package. Uh, so we were able to get an upgraded bottle of wine. But even if you don't have the wine package, they do have uh, beer and wine available at lunch and dinner. And it's not just like a cheap offering. It's a really good uh, red and a white that the chef has curated to go with a meal. Um, so that is a great benefit of Viking. Um, but even with the Silver Spirits package, it wasn't very expensive at all. And I I think can be well worth it if you're someone that likes 
maybe an upgraded cocktail um, or, you know, my son is a bartender, so he liked ordering these fancy martinis and we would get a, a better bottle of wine with dinner every night. And I felt like it was just an excellent dining experience. Now, having said that, the problem with a smaller ship is outside of dining times, there's really no way to get food. So that's gonna be my first thing that you need to be aware of that I didn't love. Um, and that's the, the lack of availability of food outside of dining hours. So if I were to do another river cruise, which I hope to do, because I definitely think Scott would love it and it's something we really wanna do together, um, I would go into town and get snacks. Uh, the good news is you're always docked in villages, and so it's really easy to go to a grocery store. I, it's just, you know, sometimes it's 10 o'clock at night and you feel a little peckish and you want something to eat, and the only things that would be available 24 hours a day would be the coffee, sparkling water, tea station, and then they would have some cookies and sometimes some pastries. But outside of that, there's no room service available unless you're in one of the suites. And so that made it a little bit tricky in terms of food. And we were not the only ones that complained about this. So if I had some feedback, I would say, and I wrote this in our guest survey, I would say if there could even be just like a little snack bar, like what they have on international flights with just some little cheese or chips or something that you could grab, because sometimes you're really hungry and it's not a meal time. So just, just be aware of that. But if you're aware and you go in and you either bring some snacks from the US with you or you buy some snacks in France, where by the way, they have some snacks, um, then you know, you'll just, you'll be aware when you get on the ship. The other thing is you don't have to eat on the ship. Uh, one night, in fact, it was the night they did the Normandy buffet. The buffet was amazing, but we ended up going into the town where we were docked with our friends. Uh, Ruin was the name of the town. And we actually ended up, uh, or no, it wasn't uh, Ruin, it was uh, Vernon. We were in Vernon, or Vernon, as I was saying it. Uh, we went in and got sushi because the ship was gonna be docked overnight. So that is like the number one thing that blew me away in terms of like convenience. The fact that you can just pop on and off this river cruise any old time you want. Obviously, you need to be aware of when the ship is going to leave. That's super important. But it, it was really strange to me to be docked overnight in a port and be out until 1030 or 11 at night and just come on in and, and tap our card and be on the ship. Very, very different than an ocean cruising. And it, it really did feel more like a floating hotel that was taking me through these parts of France that I would not be able to see otherwise where I happened to have included breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that part of it uh, really exceeded my expectations. Uh, one day I got off the ship. Um, there, had, there was a big excursion that I chose not to do that day. And instead, I just walked around a local city park and looked at you know, families and there was a petting zoo and people were having picnics. And that's how I love to travel. Um, I'm huge at going into local city parks, city zoos, things like that, to really see how people live. Um, and it, it's, it's one of my like really, really favorite things to do. So the fact that I could just walk off the ship and we were docked where there was this beautiful park made it feel extremely magical. And I absolutely love that. Okay, let's talk about the excursions for a minute. As I said before, Viking has an included excursion at every single port of call. This is also true on Viking Sea, which are their ocean liners. Um, when my mom and I did the uh, West Indies Explorer, we took advantage of all of the free excursions. Now, if you are someone who does not like being on a big bus full of people, really read through those excursions to see if it's a big group or a small group. And you can always call Viking and ask them. Um, for example, obviously the Versailles excursion was a huge group. We knew that was gonna happen, but huge groups of people, you're not gonna move quickly. You want to pack your patience. If you're someone that prefers a smaller group, uh, you can also find those excursions. Uh, the excursion that we did to the organic uh, Calvados distillery and farm uh, in Normandy, absolutely unbelievable experience. There were nine of us on that excursion. I know that several of the people did the um, Taste of France. They did a food tour in Paris, and I think there was like nine or 12 people on that excursion. You do pay more for those smaller excursions, but if that is more your speed, I would definitely consider doing that. 
The other thing I would consider, especially if you're docked in a place like Paris and you are an experienced traveler, you can just explore on your own. In fact, as much as we enjoyed the excursion to Versailles, we would have felt very comfortable taking a train from Paris and making our way out there ourselves. We would have paid less money. But again, we're very experienced travelers. My son has been in France many times. This was my fourth time in Paris. Um, so if you're not, if, if you're someone who's not super experienced of, you know, navigating trains and all of that in a foreign country, definitely go with the excursions. Viking also has availability for private excursions that you can uh, have them book for you um, if you don't love that big crowd experience. Um, Normandy was the other one that you could have booked a smaller tour group. I kind of enjoyed that being a large group just because of what it is. We had quite a few uh, retired and active duty military on our sailing. They did a special ceremony with them. They laid a wreath um, at the tomb there. It was, it was a really beautiful experience and it was wonderful to experience it with a group of people. Um, but just be aware, river cruises and big excursions are going to be big excursions. So if that is not your cup of tea, you want to make sure you steer clear of the huge excursions. Having said that, you could have gone on this cruise and used it as a floating hotel and never done one of Vikings excursions and that would have been absolutely fantastic. We had a bit of a change in our itinerary, which does happen from time to time with river cruises because of water levels. The Seine was a little too high for us to dock in Paris at the end of our trip. So they made sure that they could bus everybody to their excursions and people who just wanted to wander around Paris, they actually did a shuttle because we were parked um, in Le Pec, I think it's called, uh, a suburb of Paris. And they just, you could get on the bus and go into Paris and then there was a time when they brought you back. So you can still explore on your own. So it really is kind of a choose your own adventure experience. So everything from someone who was maybe very anxious and wanted Viking to handle everything, you can do that. Or if you're extremely independent and you want to just do your own thing, you can do that as well. And I don't think I really realized how much flexibility there was. And when I go on my next river cruise, we will probably opt to do more on our own or I will choose the smaller excursions. That's just me. That's how I like to travel. Um, so just rest assured you have either option, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, now I want to get into who is a Viking cruise for, because a lot of you had reached out and expressed to me that you were worried that you would not fit in. Maybe you're my age, maybe you're a little younger than me. So I just want to alleviate your fears. There was a wonderful woman on our sailing that was 91, and then my son was definitely the youngest at 24, but there were all ages in between. There were a lot of folks in their 40s, there were a lot of people in their 50s and 60s, and yes, there were a lot of people in their 70s and 80s. I liked that. I felt like it was such a great mix of people. Um, but I think this idea that river cruising is for old people is kind of an outdated thing. And, and if you think back, like when my grandmother was into cruising, she would cruise on the love boat. And back then, that was for old people. And we certainly know that's not the truth now. Now, why it's good for people who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond is because they take such good care of you, because they are picking you up from the airport, from baggage claim. They're making sure that you're safe. They're making sure that everything is taken care of. They're making sure there are wheelchairs available if you needed that. They're getting you back to the airport at the end of your trip. All of that is ideal. But we also had quite a few people in their 40s and 50s on our sailing. So I think it's definitely more of a mixed group than I had anticipated. But yes, this does appeal to older travelers and I absolutely can see why. I think for me, um, it was so great to travel with my son, but I could also see me doing this with my mom. So if you have an elderly relative that you would like to take on this like epic, maybe once in a lifetime trip, this is such a fantastic option because you have so much support, because they will make sure that everything is taken care of. So as a multi-generational trip, I think this could be really, really great and a fantastic way to go. Overall, we loved our Viking cruise. Really, the, if, if, the only feedback I have is I wish they had more availability of food during the non-meal uh, times during the day, which feels very much like a champagne problem because it was very easy for us to get food at the you know Monoprix or whatever little shop was right there in town. The docking in the different smaller villages 
I just wasn't ready, y'all. I was not prepared for docking in a village and literally just walking a few steps and being at this gorgeous garden that led up to this beautiful chateau that then had steps up to this watchtower. And then we could walk into town and we could eat at the creperie and it, it just was magical. It felt like a fairy tale. And if that is the kind of touring that you're interested in doing, if you want to have that kind of very intimate experience where you're right there along the Seine and you can go to places that, I, I mean, I don't know about you, I never would have been in some of these villages if I hadn't have done it on a Viking cruise. On Easter Sunday, we were in a town called Les Andelis, uh, which is just this quaint, beautiful town in the Normandy part of France. We were able to look in the shops and see everybody out and having picnics. And it just was a beautiful trip. It was such a blessing to be able to share it with my son. I am already looking at their itineraries to plan another trip with Viking. I really enjoyed it that much. I think the value for money is tremendous, especially if you look at all of the things that are included. And um, yeah, I, I think if you've been on the fence about going, I think you should definitely go and uh, maybe I'll see you there. So whatever you're doing today, I hope you're finding joy. Again, huge thanks to Viking for hosting me for this beautiful once in a lifetime cruise with my son. Huge thanks to my son for tagging along. He stayed a few days in Paris after I left and I think he had a pretty good time. He told me he did. I think he had fun. Love you guys and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.